we talk about uh, uh, taxes, we're talking about the property tax base there. Uh, residential property taxes on the average Vancouver home have increased by about 22% over the last four years based on some analysis we were recently doing, mm -hmm. which is faster than mm -hmm. most other municipalities in the region. Mm -hmm. If you were mayor, so again, this is one of our quick questions, we just want a quick answer and then we'll have more chance to expand on it later. But if you are mayor, can residents expect the increase to be lower, higher, or about the same over the next four years? We'll start with Way. We're going to do a financial audit of the city. Sorry, just lower, a quick question. Lower, higher, or about the same than 22% over the next four years? Lower. Hector? We're going to shoot for lower. Lower. About the same. Okay. Now, uh, we'll start with a question for Way. Um, your platform promises lower taxes. We'd like to hear more about that. I mean, is that residential and commercial and commercial property taxes uh, would be lower for both? Um, how much lower? You're also talking about offering free parking at certain times, which of course would reduce one of the city's few levers to generate revenue. So specifically, what services or programs would you be proposing to cut in order to lower taxes? And can you tell us more about how you'll be lowering? I think one of the key issues in the city election is livability for the regular person in Vancouver. And one of the key issues around livability is taxes. Every time we turn around, whether it's a transit tax uh, cost that went up on July 1st, whether it's parking, whether it's our property taxes, as you just said, 22%. I mean, every single time everyone turns around the city, there's a, a higher demand for taxes in whichever way. So the parking uh, fees that we're proposing to, uh, to get away with in, in, on Sundays. So there will be free parking on Sundays citywide and free parking after 8 p.m. citywide under our plan. And the reason for that is that we want to generate revenue. We want the economy to be more robust. We want people to be able to shop and to dine and to do things in Vancouver again. I've heard so many people say, oh, they're going to drive to XYZ, other municipality, because they don't have to pay for parking. That is a very standard thing that's happening in our city now. Our small businesses are hurting because of that. And so that's why the free parking is a very important thing. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to be looking at, as I said earlier, a city audit, because we need to know where the money is going. Why is it that during a huge period of growth for the last decade, Vancouver is $2 billion in debt when our neighboring cities are in surplus over a billion dollars each? That is a question that everybody needs to ask themselves. Every man, woman, and child in Vancouver right now is $400 of that $2 billion debt. And so these are issues in the sense that we need to be looking at where is our money going? Where are the CEACs going? Because nobody seems to know. These dollars are being taken out of the community where the buildings are going into, and facilities have not been upgraded, roads have not been looked after, there's potholes everywhere, and the city is getting increasingly dirtier and grittier because the uh, garbage routes have not been um, as robust as before, the trimmings of the trees are not happening, and so these are all things that we're going to be looking at. So what we'd like to hear though is if you want to reduce the city's revenue generating mechanisms and you want to also lower taxes, what services or programs would you cut? What we're going to be doing then, as I said, is we're going to be doing a city review to be looking at what are the things that we're spending money on at the city that are unnecessary. Okay, so you're not sure now. The four, what, well, what no, you would be well, there's a couple of big things. I mean, the $4.5 million bike lane in front of Vancouver General Hospital is one of them. The two, Which four is, point, it's been built. The $4 billion. It would cost more money to remove it, wouldn't it? But th that's just symptomatic of the kinds of projects that are going on in the city. There are pet projects going on throughout the city that are unnecessary <coughs> or not used by a majority of the people. The other thing we're not going to be doing is tearing down the George and the Vi Dunsmere Viaduct. That's a $4.5 billion cost that the city of Vancouver does not need to incur. And especially given that they haven't conducted or have appropriate transit studies for how we're going to solve that slope problem between downtown and e the east side. So there are some huge costs that are on the books that we don't need to be doing, and there's some huge savings. As we said earlier, around the bureaucracy, around the planning department, et cetera, why do we have to wait four times as long to get the permits? Who's in charge of those processes? You know, can they be streamlined and savings and um, made at the city itself? And those are all things we're going to be looking at. Okay, great. We'd like to uh, get responses uh, a minute each. We'll start with Hector. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
first of all, we're committing to conducting a core review. So much of what we were talking about, again, in this sort of scattered gun approach are, are things that you would do, perhaps, in a core review. But we are going to be bringing in a blue ribbon panel. Uh, we will be announcing shortly who that panel is. But it's senior uh, people who have conducted core reviews in government before and have a track record of a success. We effect effectively never conducted a core review in the city of Vancouver. Nobody does a, not, doesn't do that in their own household or small business. I mean, if things are, uh, you just don't ever mind the shop and just you know, let things go forever and pile things on. So uh, that is one critical piece in finding those efficiencies and restructuring the organization to make sense for 2018 and beyond. Beyond that is in speaking with uh, our uh, tech community, uh, and there have been a variety of organizations attempting to get the current mayor and regime to listen to them to adopt city, uh, smart city technology. They came to me as the Vancouver City Councilor saying, why can't we get a meeting? Why can't we be listened to? You guys are about 10 to 15 years behind a comparable city. You are living in the dark ages. You're operating like a village. Most of the uh, workflow stuff that we're talking about is conducted in the lower mainland, mostly through technology. Uh, for example, an individual who, uh, and a good friend who helped us shape our housing policy is a civil engineer building infrastructure right here in the lower mainland. And when he designs a sewer and water and infrastructure system for Metro, he uploads that design file right into the city, and that's the, uh, into Metro rather, and that system will red light and green light it in terms of a permitting right away. So it's just how we move through the process, and we need a core review and integration of smart city technology. Great, thank you. And Ken? Yeah, so how uh, city budgets work. So like everyone else, it seems, we are going to create um, have a, an independent audit on city finances. And to give you a little bit of history, um, like I said, I'm a chartered accountant, and I used to be a forensic accountant. Um, how city or how big budgets work? Uh, usually, what happens is a budget um, from the previous year is increased by three or five percent, and that becomes the new budget. And then come December, uh, there are a bunch of departments that say, "Wow, we have ten million dollars to spend, and we have to spend it, or we lose it." So a big chunk of our efficiencies that we are going to find are just cutting that silliness out of the equation. And we know we'll find a lot. I've had lots of conversations with people at the city and there, there are all these little rules. For example, in some departments you have spending limits of let's say you can't sign a contract for more than $200,000, but you can sign four at $50,000 each. So people are finding ways around the system. We're going to stop that. Um, when it comes to uh, commercial taxes, we are going to be looking. We're going to look very hard at how BC Assessments uh, assesses property taxes on commercial properties because I can tell you right now, our businesses are struggling. Um, I have first-hand experience at one of my locations. We pay more in property taxes than we do in rent, and that's because of the way our uh, properties are assessed. If one our one-story building is near an apartment complex that just went up, guess what? We get taxed as an apartment complex. And there are ways around it where we can actually stop the insanity and then actually roll it back. And we'll talk about that if you'd like. Great, thank you. Yeah, well, uh, we have the election October 20th and we're sworn in on November 5th. And one of the first things we'll be deciding on is the new budget. And by law, uh, provincial law, uh, cities can't run deficits. So uh, if you're going to cut taxes, then you actually are cutting services immediately. A lot of the city budget is uh, for protective services. So that's for police, fire, ambulance. Uh, and so you are, you know, you have very few revenue streams uh, outside of property tax. You get service charges. But, uh, but if you're going to cut taxes right away, then of course you've got to cut services right away. And what, what's been absent from this debate, well, what, it's, been a weird, it's been a weird election campaign because we have all these promises of spending and then, <laughs> and then at the very end, oh, I'm going to cut taxes too. And that, and that doesn't work. So I, I'm glad you've asked the question about what, ta what services are going to be cut because it comes out to which library branch do you close? Which, uh, which park do you stop? mowing the lawn, uh, which, which neighborhoods get fewer police patrols. And that's really, uh, so that's why I think you need, uh, we need experience going into this election it's, uh, and, and on city council that has dealt with, I mean I've gone through seven but, uh, federal budget cycles, like I know how this works, I know Way's been through four of them, and the, this, is, this is a lot of experience here, that, and, but we have to have it hitting the ground running. So, so these kind of wishy-washy answers about, oh, I'm, I'm going to find efficiencies, well, let's pretend we all find the same efficiencies, but they're still going to cut taxes. Then what services are you going to reduce? And that's why I won't make that promise, because I don't think we can do it here in the city. Right, thank you. 
Let's open it up. I just get, quickly, because I've actually voted on city budgets, and the process was, uh, I was, thought was shocking. I didn't think it was terribly clear, and I thought that the gimmicky last-minute moves uh, by Vision to sneak in some extra tax increases, it was extremely divisive to the community, and I thought it was um, using emotionally divisive issues uh, to play politics with our budget, and I don't think that we should be using our budget that way. And I think we need to commit to backing up here and remembering also that it's not about cut or spend. It's not a zero-sum game. What does your business do when it's a little bit short on cash? What does your house do, home household do, when you're not having enough revenue? You go out and you make more money. The reality is, is that we have been staring uh, uh, incredible business opportunity for us as a city, and that is smart development and the building of new, small business friendly, walkable communities with more multimodal housing and capturing the land lift out of that capturing the revenue out of that and building more housing for people so they can afford to live here. Because I, as I spent time as the assistant to the Minister of International Trade and I was active in attracting uh, in the negotiations of several large uh, employers to Vancouver. And you know what? The ones that decided not to come, every time, every time it was the housing crisis. They said, you know, look, we'd love to come there, but we can't afford to pay your people enough. So look, let's create jobs. Let's not treat this as a cut or, you know, cut or raise taxes thing. It's, it's not a zero sum game. Let's raise more revenue and take a bigger, sh uh, a lion's share of a rising tide. Like it, so, so it's quite a seductive argument actually, well, and it's not a bad one that you would have uh, you know, more properties, more property tax, however, it does not empty boxes. There's people living in those homes and, and people demand more services. So we'll have to have more police, more fire fighters, for it, but, but you actually have more uh, operational services. So your tax levels basically stay at the same level unless you overall decrease your service. But so, you do so, it so you pay so, for it. But, but this is what we're all going to be experiencing the same, if we have the same level of growth, we're all going to have the same level of revenue coming in. But we, but we, if we're promising to cut taxes, then we have to say what services. But Kennedy, we're you reduce. teach this, and you, you know this as you know as well as anybody. I mean, come on. I mean, is it just because the argument of don't build more houses because you're going to have more services and you need to raise the tax I'm not rate don't plus? Build more houses. So, what we, you know, but I don't think people want to hear that we're going to be able to take a piece of a much larger pie. Plus, we want a higher percentage of the larger pie. I think people want to see government right size. They want to see that it works I agree. for you have them. To be, so I you think have that there's no fear the in saying that we need a core review. Structure ourselves well, like to say, be though, efficient. You actually, you actually have an answer for this question. Like you say, well, we're going to build more houses, we're going to get more revenue. Where Ken has no answer. He comes in and he says, yeah. well, and he has no government experience. Well, and but I think you, that's you have why great government experience with the NDP, and yeah, what you guys like to I do, do a lot is of raise, seven raise years of taxes and spend, actually raise and spend, raise before. and spend. But when push comes to shove, and mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to make it, like make your voice heard, when people are getting dem evicted out of their homes. You stay this silent. A, okay, and so, but you know what? That's to dodge your, the question here. Is, uh, there's no question. What, the, we're, what we're can talking, the people of Vancouver expect from you? And they can somehow magically expect more services but giant tax cuts and well, then no, you know, no and, housing. And, and that's the fundamental difference between myself and you. That it's, you don't you, have any no, plan or no, experience. No, you actually that's do not difference. understand that there's actually a different option. All you see is no we option. have to raise taxes to provide services. And if you don't do that, you have to cut. I come from a world where you actually have to run things efficiently and people actually want to see it run efficiently. It's no, like rainbows there. Unicorn, you know? actually, yeah. yeah. Like okay, you, so we, we, just, we taxes, just built so one of the, the largest organizations, private home care organizations in North America. That's not a unicorn. But don't uh, run the idea. city like a business and you don't treat We're running a well-run like organization where but we, cities have are people, different. we keep people at home. They are very you different. You do not know shop. how to run an organization and you don't say anything when people are getting dem evicted out of their homes. It's a fundamental difference tag me with the smear as much as you want, but why don't you you're answer the question because you yeah. want to be the leader of this city and you're providing no leadership here. You're not giving clear numbers. You're saying you're going to cut taxes and increase services. I'm not making well, up numbers. You're making up numbers. You make I'm up numbers I'm offering a number on, that you can debate. You, you have would, Okay, well, I'm debating it right now. Your number, What's it your doesn't, 85,000 homes. Does no, that's my sense. number. If that's great. You, 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 you might. You, you can borrow my number why, if you why want, don't or you can borrow it. Hector's number. Why don't you triple it? So because it's not going to happen. So you're going to go for 170,000. No, I'm saying why don't you what double is or your triple number? it? Why don't you like make up a number? Because I've your presented. number, your number is made up. Your number <laughs> is made up. There, it's not going to happen. Unicorns, rainbows. That's Ken exactly what. That's your plan. Ken it's a unicorn and a rainbow. What's your plan? And that's not my opinion. Andy Yan at SFU Former has actually student. challenged you on it, and he said, I've "We don't have the capacity." There's a lot of Your other plan is a that unicorn. Don't agree that, you just admitted uh, and, it. Yeah, but well, I think I think what's important here is to remember is that um, 
people at home can't afford, there are people being taxed out of their homes right now. Let's be real. Small businesses are being taxed into closure and on my team, we have five small business owners running with me to be Vancouver City Councillors. And uh, all of them are running because they're being crushed by high taxes and they can't get talent in the city. And what they're looking for is not tinkering around the edges of what we've been doing. Not more promises of basement suites and laneway homes. Not more denial that there is a problem and we just don't need to do anything about it and we're just gonna magically you know, wave a wand and we can spend and tax less. What they want is a real plan. And that is what's at stake here. And I'm really hoping that in this election that we can push past all this and that we can actually vote for a plan that works.